I'm Rob Bojan from Transylvania and in the first week I will show you the signal flow for Cosea introduction to music production. So here's how signal flow works in my setup. First we have the sound pressure variations that are caused by the speaker or other sound sources. These sound pressure variations are then captured by the microphone, in this case the Shure Beta 57A and are converted from the pressure variations to an electrical signal. That uh, electrical signal is then uh, sent through an XLR, XLR cable that is actually balanced to a um, preamp. I'm actually using an external preamp, the Banger Tube Ultra Gain Mic 100. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the audio interface that I have, in my opinion, doesn't amplify it enough and it isn't the right sound. So what does so actually the preamp actually amplifies the input the I mean the output from a microphone and it's controlled by a trimmer pot potentiometer and it's amplified to a normal sound. So the Behringer Ultra Gain is actually powered by a vacuum tube, the ECC83 or the American Standard 12AX7. This amplified signal is then sent by another XLR cable to a an, to an Line 6 audio interface, the Tom port UX3, UX2. This audio interface then converts the electrical the amplified electrical signal to from an analog to a digital so then it's it's converted to a, a strings of ones and zeros and these ones and zeros are then sent through an USB 2.0 cable to the PC and I'm actually using the Cubase 5 for this so this is for recording and for playing the sound it's from the Cubase from the PC via the USB 2.0 cable to the Line 6 audio interface and then sent off via cooling jack to the monitors for one one for each the left and the right so it's actually like a stereo in the mini jack and at the same time to the mini jack to the headphones so here's actually the microphone the Shure Beta 57A it's positioned in front of a speaker cabinet and it catches sounds and that transport, t transformed sound pressure variation into electrical signal is then transferred via this yellow XLR cable to the preamp. Here is the external additional preamp. Here is the game, uh, the trim, po trim potentiometer that controls how much is going to be amplified. It has a PID, so it's padded, but I don't use it. It also has the, f the 48 plus phantom power. It has the phase uh, reverser and the limiter. It also has a uh, controlled how much output I is there gonna be. The maximum is 10 dB full scale. So then it's transferred to another XLR bands cable into the audio interface. The audio interface gain, microphone gain is actually at zero because the preamp uh, amplifies it enough so I don't need additional amplifying. The audio interface is a Line 6 tone port UX2. It's actually quite good co uh, quality for its price. And it also has the phantom powered. It has the instrument input and the padded instrument input for the high gain instruments. On the back side, it has two line inputs, two foot switches, the USB cable, digital outputs, monitors in and analog outs. You can also control how much how much volume or how much amplitude is gonna go out to the analog outputs, so to the monitors and 
you can control how loud is going to be the headphones. So here's for the phones. Here the you you meters and it goes via this USB cable to the computer into the soft software. I'm using QWAS, so it's the signal is actually recorded by by a track. This track is then played through the audio interface, and it's quite the audio interface. The tone port is actually for its value. It's it's very qualitative. So that's my signal flow. I hope I covered all the parts that I needed. So check it out and thanks for watching. Uh, tell me your your opinion. And here's when my lecture stops. But if you see want to see more, you can continue showing. I just want to um, address to the teacher that the XLR cable. I just want to correct the teacher about the XLR cable because it doesn't reject the noise. It actually absorbs it in the sleeve and then sends it to a ground. So here's how XLR cables are wired. So here's the XLR cable and you can see in every I think it's in the male connector there are three three numbers one two three and the number one is always grounded and that's actually the most important part of everything it has to be grounded if it's not or if it isn't correctly grounded you will have a lot of humming a lot of noise and it will destroy and it can also destroy um, a microphone or it can destroy all sorts of electrical stuff so the number two is usually the positive and the number three is negative so the negative and the ground are actually in most cases the same so here's an example how an, an, an XLR cable is wired let's say here's the male connector and here's the female the all the cables are running in the same numbers from one to one to two to two and three and three are, are together and the one is always granted run at least at one part of the machine or an electrical appliance here's how it's wired the XLR cable and the quarter inch if you use it in the balance configuration the, fir the number one that is actually grounded is by the sleeve so it's in this part the ring seen here is wired to number three so it's like negative and the tip that's positive is wired to the two the same as this diagram shows so what are actual noises the noises are when you have the AC current oops, and you have some AC current well, cable for powering an appliance so let's say this is an amplifier and it uses the AC current in Europe 23 volts and 50 Hertz so that connect uh, that makes around the cable let's say that is the cable and here are the veins it makes around it just like a magnetic field and this magnetic field is actually the disturbances and is actually the noise so if you have another cable let's say here these noises will be will come into the cable and make the humming noise so if if you have it proper, uh, properly grounded these noises will go to the ground and won't be and won't be in the cable anymore and it will be uh, quite uh, quietly so almost every device is grounded it's grounded by the cable as you can have let's say in the European there are two connectors the live wire in the negative and it's uh, up
upper and down side there's the ground and this ground must always be properly connected if it's not uh, sometimes you can get a shock but sometimes it's just a humming and most people get upset because this ground isn't properly and it's a lot of humming so that's how actually this is how actually the balance cable works it doesn't reject it it actually um, absorbs it but it doesn't allow it to go to the positive side to the main to the to the signal it actually it catches it in the sleeve and gets it um, in the fastest way to the ground so it's eliminated and thanks for watching